This is principlesofaccounting.com chapter 3. In this particular module, we will begin to look at adjusting entries and the adjusting process. This is the first of two modules on this subject. Let's look closer at the reason for adjustments. Multi-period items is one example. Some revenue and expense items may relate to more than one accounting period. Prior to preparing financial statements, it's necessary to apportion those items to the appropriate accounting periods. Other items are said to be accrued items. Revenues or expenses may have been earned or incurred in a given period, but not yet entered in the accounting periods. It's commonly called accruals. Let's give further consideration to the adjusting process. Recognize that there's no way to catalog every potential adjustment that a business may need to make. Therefore, before one can prepare adjusting entries for a particular business, it's very necessary to understand business operations. Typical adjustments can relate to a variety of items. Here I have a couple of tables that talk about multi-period items such as prepaid insurance or prepaid rent or accounting for, adjusting for supplies, depreciation, uh, or the recording of unearned revenue. The accrued type items relate to things such as accrued salaries, accrued interest, accrued rent, or accrued revenues. Now the textbook illustrates each of these in turn. We're going to look in this video at just a few examples. First, looking at prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses represent amounts that have future economic benefit, but as time passes, the asset is diminished. Uh, therefore, adjustments are needed to reduce the asset and transfer the asset's consumption to an expense account. Let's look at a very simple illustration of prepaid expenses. Imagine you have a home, and in front of that home you have a lawn, and you contract at the beginning of June to have the lawn mowed the entire summer, and you prepay for that full summer's benefit for $300, essentially paying $100 a month for the lawn mowing service. As each month passes, $100 of the benefit is consumed, the lawn is mowed or maintained for that period of time, and so that will require an adjustment at the end of each month to reflect the consumption of the $300 prepaid asset. So let's look at an illustration. First of all, in June, we see that we have mowing expense of $100 for June's income statement. A July's income statement would also include $100 of mowing expense, and if we prepared another income statement for August, it would include $100 of mowing expense. If we look at the balance sheet on June 1, you see that we've got $300 representing our prepaid service. However, at the end of June, 100 of that has been consumed and expensed, so our balance sheet would only reflect $200. At the end of July, only one month's service remains prepaid, so only $100 would be in the asset account. And then at the end of August, at the end of the summer, all of the service has been received, all of the cost of the service has been transferred to expense, and the balance sheet would include zero for the prepaid mowing. Let's look at prepaid rent and start thinking about journal entries. In this case, we have a two-month lease that's entered into on March 1, and we're paying $3,000 for a two-month lease. At the inception of the lease on March 1, we would need to debit an asset prepaid rent for $3,000. At March 31, if we were to then prepare financial statements, we would want them to be up to date. And so an adjusting entry would be needed. And notice then that adjusting entry includes a credit to prepaid rent. Half of the $3,000 has now been consumed, the service has been received, and that amount is transferred to rent expense. At the end of March, still $1,500 of the original $3,000 would still remain in the prepaid account, and that would become April's expense. How frequently should adjustments be recorded? The very short answer to that is, every time financial statements are prepared, they need to be up to date and correct. So adjustments need to be recorded at least at each financial statement date to reflect the current amount of revenue and expense. So think about the goal of adjustments. The goal of adjustments is to correctly assign the appropriate amount of expense to the time period in question, leaving the remainder in a balance sheet account to carry over to the next time period. This concludes the first module on adjusting entries. There is a second module or video on adjusting entries, and we'll look at additional examples in far more detail within that video.